Good afternoon, everyone. Our presentation today covers the readings of Habitudes. My name is Danny. I'm Brooke. And I'm Takaki. And we want to begin things today with a video called Communication Fail. It's a parody about a typical presentation that we hope everyone here can relate to in some way. Quadruple checking your notes as people file in. Getting the computer ready and asking everyone to take a seat. Pretending to click something on the computer to cover up the fact that I don't know what to do with my stuff. Arriving just in time. Wrapping up our conversation about a popular TV show we watched last night. Disdain for popular TV show. <clears throat> Mediocre icebreaker joke. That doesn't quite land. <laughs> um, attempt to redeem myself by making fun of that guy. <laughs> laughing at that guy. Laughing because he's laughing and I like him. <laughs> Not laughing. And now checking out for the rest of the session. Title, dramatic pause of my presentation. Question about how long this session will last. Annoyed vague response. Exaggerated eye roll. Poignant quote from unknown philosopher to kick off presentation in dramatic fashion. The juvenile slide transition to spice things up. <laughs> Reading a long paragraph exactly as it appears on the PowerPoint slide about a shocking statistic I just learned about, followed by all kinds of vague lingo that no one will remember two seconds from now, capped off by three bullet points. Proudly pause to make sure everyone notices my awesome clip art choice. <laughs> Out of date pop culture reference. Uh, correction about pop culture reference. Uh, defending pop culture reference by citing social networking site no one uses. Audible side to make sure everyone knows this is a complete waste of my time. Uh, serious and somewhat over the top reminder about how important this information is. Uh, uh, unexpected technical difficulty. Embarrassed people can see my desktop background. Snide remark about how Macs are better than PCs. Uh, desperate plea for IT guy. Fixing the problem with an annoyed look on my face so that everyone knows how good at computers I am. <laughs> Unfunny video I'm really proud of having created myself. Texting my friend in a way that I think is discreet. Clearly aware of the texting. Prefacing a preface of a preface so that no one really understands the point that I'm prefacing. And now, going through a long list of facts, one by one by one, asking if anyone has any questions, reminding everyone there are no bad questions, hoping if I wait long enough, someone will finally have a question. Concluding by restating the title of my presentation and dismissing everyone. <laughs> Excited that someone came back for a follow up conversation. Grabbing a pen that I accidentally left. That video has a lot of funny aspects to it, but the real overall tone that you get from that is that it's just a very awkward presentation. And so our goal today is to equip you with some techniques that can help you not be that presenter. So our agenda today is going to follow the Sir Winston method. It was derived from a simple pattern that Winston Churchill used himself when he would prepare his speeches for uh, public. So let's talk about the why. Why do you need to know this information? Well, aside from it helping you become a better public speaker, uh, there's other aspects of our lives that we probably don't realize we play the role of a communicator. We're all a member of a family unit. We all have a social network of friends or colleagues at work. And at some point in our life, or already in our life, we're in a romantic relationship. And in all of these settings, we actually are a communicator. 
So even though today's information may be a little bit more geared towards the public speaking aspect, there's stuff in here that can actually help you in these other realms of life as well. So to begin, the first step of the Sir Winston Method is to have a strong beginning. Now as we saw in the video, the beginning lacked any kind of oomph. The audience felt awkward, they didn't get the reference, and to redeem himself, he tried to make fun of someone and inevitably shut that person down from listening to the rest of the presentation. So let's avoid doing that. Now, the average person receives over 250 commercial messages every single day, and that is far too much for our brain to handle. So our brain has developed filters to filter out the irrelevant information. So as a communicator, this poses a problem because our intent is to pass along a message to someone, and we have to compete with this filter. So how do we spark that interest in the, in the person listening to us. Well, psychologists say that the human brain perceives information to be relevant when it elicits one of these three emotions. Those emotions are fear, hope, and pleasure. Now, to have a strong beginning, you want to use something in the beginning of your presentation that will help elicit one of these emotions to really drive that uh, spark ignite inside someone. This is what we're going to refer to as lighting the fire. Now, we're going to light a fire of our own and not just on the screen. We have designed a question on our quiz today that you have to be paying attention to our presentation to get the answer. Don't worry though, we'll point it out and as long as you're listening you get a freebie. If you miss out on it, I'm sorry. Now, I'm going to pass things over to Brooke, who's going to start the next four part of the Sir Winston Method. Hi, everyone. The next, the second step of the Sir Winston Method is the use of simple language. But in order to understand where the simple language use comes from, you need to understand the difference between a public speaker and a communicator. We have all been taught through our education to be great public speakers. You know, you want to impress your audience, look very formal, use the correct grammar, enunciate your, wor your words. So you need to your words be polished. And then you're gonna teach a lesson, not so much, um, you're just gonna teach from the textbook, teach what you know. A uh, great communicator, on the other hand, wants to impact their audience. They wanna make a difference to their audience. They get more on a personal level, and they wanna teach people. They want their audience to leave knowing something that they did not know before they got there. So we've come up with a couple of ways that you can say it plain and simple. The first is to be personal. You need to get down on your audience's level and make them think that you're speaking to them as an individual instead of a whole group. The next way is to keep your sentences short. If you get very long-winded, your audience is gonna zone out on you so fast, you're not even gonna know what to do with yourself. The next is you wanna use language that your audience understands. If you go into a presentation and you're using jargon that no one understands, your, your, your audience is gonna just have this zoned out look on their face and they're gonna leave thinking that was a complete waste of my time. And then you also wanna make your simple words count. By this, this means that do not over talk your audience because I don't care what anyone says, it is not gonna make you appear smarter. Your audience is then gonna zone out on you before you even get to your granular level. So here's an example. Let's just say that I am giving you a review to a quiz and I say something to the effect of, um, the answer you seek in the Six Flag Mire will be neither the last choice nor the first choice. For your selection, it would be wise to look between the two. Or simply put, I could have just said, number, the answer to number six is C. So the third step of the one, uh, the third step of the Sir Winston Method is to select one theme. You wanna stay on topic. In order to stay on topic, if you select one simple theme, and one simple follow-up, then you will avoid scope creep. What scope creep is, is when you've done all your research and you have gathered all this information and you are you know, have all this wealth of knowledge that you wanna share to your audience, but sometimes they're not to that point to tack on additional information. So if you will just refer back to your one simple theme, then you keep your messages clear and focused. So if you only remember one thing from this presentation, it's just to remember the acronym KISS, and that's Keep It Simple Sweet. Now I'm going to pass it over to Takaki, and he will cover the remaining steps. All right, thanks, Brooke. 
All right, so step four of the Sir Winston method is to have pictures. And now when he created this method back when World War II was a thing, uh, he meant it as stories or metaphors. And although that is important, and I will get to that in a few minutes, I also want to cover how applied to today, that could literally mean pictures because it is important to have visual aids to your presentation in order to help your audience create a mental image of your message. But you can't just Google search a random stock photo and expect that to work for you. You have to put at least a little bit of thought into it and choose something that will communicate your message properly. Otherwise, the graphic you use could be very, very distracting for your audience. And they may, their mind may wander and think, what, what is that image for and how does that relate to the presentation? So a common saying is a picture is worth a thousand words. But to me, that just means that interpretation is up to the eyes of the beholder. So you shouldn't let your audience's mind wander and try to create their own interpretation. As the communicator, you should either provide a straightforward image that speaks for itself or somehow incorporate the uh, graphic into your message verbally. Now back to Sir Winston's original meaning of pictures as in stories or metaphors, it is very important to have stories in your presentation. And an easy acronym to remember the four aspects of a story you should have in your presentation is SCAR. Let's go through each letter. S is for story. We are told stories our entire lives as a form of entertainment, and that is because stories are captivating and they are engaging. When we're kids, we are told bedtime stories and fairy tales, and for the rest of our lives, we're told stories through entertainment such as TV, movie, books, and even music. So entertainment has stories because they catch our attention. So make sure you incorporate some sort of story into your presentation in order to captivate your audience. C is for conflict. We all love watching conflict. We love drama. Every good story has conflict. If I asked any of you in here if you wanted to watch a TV show about a camera crew following around a family throughout their daily lives, that might sound boring, but reality shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, they pump in a lot of drama. <laughs> and that is why their ratings are so high, is because they know people like to watch drama. So make sure to uh, incorporate some sort of conflict or drama or dilemma like Daniel mentioned earlier into your presentation in order to catch the attention of your audience. And A is for action. Action is dramatic and like I just said, we love drama. Action is also exciting and it pumps up our adrenaline. And some research has shown that adrenaline in fact increases our memory's performance. So make sure to do something exciting in your presentation. And finally, R is for resolution. The happy end. We especially need resolution if there is conflict, because without a happy ending, there really is no point to the story. And for a presentation, you need to have that solution. And the whole point of your presentation should have been to give a solution to a problem anyway. So this is an easy acronym SCAR, so make sure to keep in mind of these four aspects. And the fifth and final step of the Sir Winston method is an emotional ending. Now your whole presentation should be emotional to some varying degrees, but I don't mean to have tear jerker moment every second. I mean show emotion and be human and connect with your audience in that way. My dad is a great example. He's a pastor, so essentially every Sunday he teaches a lesson. And with that lesson, he accompanies some sort of personal or past experience that he can share with the audience. And when he does this, he opens a window to his soul and to his humanity. And that is how he gives a mirror to the audience. And with this mirror, they reflect on themselves in their own life. And this technique is called windows and mirrors. So this is a highly effective way to connect with their audience in a way to keep, make them remember your message and hopefully apply it to their own lives. And so that is why the Sir Winston method is very important to use in your presentation if you want to have a very meaningful and impactful presentation.